Hello and welcome to O Worm. Today we'll be taking a look at owl pellets. So what exactly are owl pellets? They may not look the prettiest, but they're a way for us to peek into the mysterious lives of owls. Owls are predators and hunt a variety of prey, including mice, rabbits, lizards, birds, and even snakes. However, owls, like most birds, can't chew their food because they don't have teeth. So they swallow their prey mostly whole, and their digestive system does the rest. The food passes from the mouth of an owl down into the gizzard, which is a stomach-like organ that uses gravel and digestive acid to break down the prey. However, owls can't digest every part of the prey they eat. So while the flesh of the prey gets dissolved in the gizzard and passes into the intestines to be absorbed, material like fur or bones stay behind in the gizzard. These indigestible materials are then formed into a pellet, like the ones shown here, and gets regurgitated out. So an easy way to think of it is that owl pellets are kind of like owl vomit. But why do we care about these owl pellets? Well, it's because by studying these owl pellets, we can get a grasp of what the owl eats, when, where, and how often. Researchers can't watch owls all the time to see what they are eating, but they can study the pellets that the owl leaves behind. Because the bones from the prey stay mostly intact during digestion, it's possible to identify the prey species by examining the pellet. So let's take a look. In order to dissect an owl pellet, use tweezers to break apart the pellet, separating the fur from the bones. Make sure to take it slow and be careful, as the bones in the pellet are small and fragile. So this is the final result. I'll just set aside all the fur so we can take a look at the bones we found. So we have at least four animals here, which we can know just by counting the skulls. One, two, three, and four. And they're all rodents, but they may not be the same type of rodent and we'll try to identify each rodent by looking at the jawbones later on. And you'll see here that we have the largest and most complete collection of bones from one animal, which had this skull right here. So we'll also try to rearrange the whole skeleton for this animal later on. The easiest way to identify which rodent the owl had eaten by looking at the bones in the pellet is to look at the lower jawbones. Each rodent will have two lower jaw bones, so you can just pick one of them from the pair. And usually you can tell which jaw bones go together because they are found near each other in the pellet. So now we'll zoom in on each of these jaw bones and see which rodent they belong to. Our first and smallest jaw bone belongs to the pygmy shrew. As you can see here, the diagram and the jaw bone match and this is the skull of the pygmy shrew. The identifying characteristics of the lower jawbone is the shape of the bone here, which as you can see matches the diagram, as well as the teeth pattern right here, which as you can see also matches the diagram. The pygmy shrew is actually the smallest mammal found in North America, and due to their high metabolic rate, the pygmy shrew must eat three times its body weight daily. So our next jawbone belongs to the bank of all, as you can see here. The silhouettes line up and the teeth pattern also line up. 
right here. And this is the skull of the bank vault that was also in the pellet. This small rodent may not seem very impressive at first glance, but the bank vault is actually a jack of all trades, being a fast runner, an excellent swimmer, and a remarkable climber. Our third jawbone belongs to the field vole, as you can tell again by the matching silhouette and the teeth pattern when compared to the diagram. And the skull of the field vole is right here. As with many small mammals, field voles have an impressive birth rate, where a single female may yield up to 100 young per year. Our last jawbone, and the one we'll be reconstructing the full skeleton of, belongs to the house mouse as you can tell again by the matching silhouette and the matching teeth patterns. And the skull of the house mouse is right here. Okay, so here are all the bones from the house mouse all assembled, the house mouse being the last jawbone that we observed. So I'll just go through all the bones from head to tail, starting from here, here's the skull, and these two are the two lower jawbones. And I'll go down the vertebrae, so here are fragments of the upper vertebrae, the midsections, and some tail fragments right here. And here are the ribs, they're really thin and they make up the rib cage, as you can see right here. On the front paw, here's the shoulder blade, the humerus right here, and then the forearms which consists of the two bones, the ulna and the radius. The finger bones are way too small to be able to be found and accurately identified within an owl pellet. Moving on to the back leg, here's the pelvis, the thigh bone right here, also known as the femur, and the shin, which is made up of two bones but they're kind of fused together, the tibia and the fibula. And again in the feet, the bones are too small to identify. We'll put a copy of all the identification charts we used in the video description below. Alright, that's the end of our owl pellet dissection. Thanks for watching, friends. Here's a fun fact about food chains to send you on your way. Did you know that within any given food chain, when one organism is consumed by another, for example, when an owl, a tertiary consumer, eats a mouse, a secondary consumer, only about 10% of the energy in the mouse is transferred to the owl. Talk about inefficiency! Thanks again for watching, and if you found our video helpful, please consider subscribing, it really helps us out a lot.